Okay, functions, std function. Uh, how hard can it be? My, the reason I started with this one was because when I first looked into std function, I realized this can actually allocate memory and it can throw exceptions. And this is not a function pointer. It felt way too big in some sense. Started thinking about it and got some ID and started continue working on it. So I ended up here. Um, what I'm going to talk about, I'll start out slowly just sort of an overview of when you call a function, what different types of function can you call functors and member functions, all that, just to get the basics set down. And then I can start mention a bit about the delegate thing. I'm going to try to take it slowly this time since it's not lightning talk. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, if they're relevant at the moment, we'll talk about them then, or otherwise I'll refer it later on. So. so, what is a function call? Back to basics, 101. <coughs> uh, in the main, function one, you actually, when you do the function call, there's a number of things happening there. First, you get the name, but you also have two different functions with the same name, so you have to do overload resolution in that place which means you need to know the signature of the function. You see, we're passing in an int, we get the signature, uh, int, and it selects the right one. So there's a number of things happening there that you can actually divide down from that simple uh, statement that we got there. So, that's the basic. Uh, I'm gonna just get some notation down here. This is not uh, copied pasted from the standard, but I think this should suffice for this discussion. At least. <coughs> so the signature, the type of the functions, that's more or less the return value, the number of arguments, they're different types. Um, that defines more or less what you need for the type there. Function pointer, just an address, address of a function, or something that can contain an address of the function. Definition. I'm not really exactly sure that's right, but it's more or less where you define it, it's a handle to your function body. I would, or it's, you define the function, more or less. Function address, something you can take from a function. Arguments, the thing that you pass in compared to parameters that is actually is in the function, when you write the function, have the names on them. The argument is the one when, you, when you're using it. And then the final, one, what, the final one, overload set. That is, if you have a number of functions, as we had before, with the same name, they are usually called an overload set. So that one is good to remember for later on. Any objections? No? So if we instead want to do a function pointer, now I split up this main into four different parts. First, I want to get rid of the C notation, so I just use uh, using, so we can actually get talk about types in a sort of a reasonable way. You can set it to null, not a good idea to call it then. Um, it's in undefined behavior. Then you actually take the address, and at this point you're doing the overload resolution now. You take the name, you look at the signature, what is the actual function definition after, and then you pick out that and assign it to the function pointer. And last, when you call it, you don't really know, need to know anymore what function, function it was. So you lost the information in this step. You can actually do this call without knowing all the stuff that you knew beforehand. So that's sort of the main idea before. That is one of the main ideas with function pointers that you can actually do it in one context and then call it later on when you don't really know it. So if you do uh, the resolution and you take the address? Yes. So when you take the address, you have the type of the variable you're assigning to. So that signature together with the name determines which one you're going to do a resolution on. Okay. So uh, let's move on. That is sort of the basic for function calling. Now we have a number of different types of functions. Uh, classes can have two types, the static one the mem and the member function. 
And uh, static functions more or less did more the general free function that you're used to, but within the name, name scope of the class. But in all other respects, it's more or less as a free function. The same signature, everything. So static functions are really easy to work with for classes. It's a simp if you're coming from a C world, it's a really easy stepping stone to get into class functions. Just, use, just do them static. Uh, the, you can see from the signature here, it's more or less the same that I had before. I'm supplying extra argument now, but it's nothing special. And you take the name, they just get the name of the class before. And then call it. So nothing strange there. Then you have member functions. These are a little bit hard to think about in the beginning. Because well, until you realize that when you declare it, uh, I've, I've set up a static function and a member function sort of pairwise here so you can compare them. And the idea that I usually think about is that the member function, the first argument, is sort of hidden as the this pointer. And it's the same as you have the notation of C const here. You have the C have moved in inside and you have the const on the outside. So a little bit strange of uh, how you actually define it, but if you start thinking about the first argument as a hidden this pointer, and then it's starting to make kind of sense. But you still have this sort of quirky notation for calling it. In general, you, if you look into books and stuff, they advise you just not to use member function pointers because they're sort of strange. And there are a couple of defines in the standard they used to at least say that you should use those for do the calling and taking the address off, but not sure if it's valuable. What I've been doing, I've actually managed to isolate this so you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't have to see this in the de delegate later on. Also one thing to note, when you take the address, this is the only way to actually do it. You need to supply a class name and you need to supply the ampersand. <coughs> that is optional on, on the free function side. So it's, uh, the language is sort of finicky in this sense. And uh, they got one secret power, dynamic dispatch. So if you do a member function and you take it to the base and you call on it, it will do the dynamic dispatch on it, which you can't get with the free functions. So that's a reason to actually stick to them. Mm. So, yeah, so when you're calling down here to the base point, you actually get the derived class implementation. And uh, functors, that's the third major one. Uh, free functions, member functions, and functors, that's, I would call the three different categories, that's interesting. You declare operator with some kind of signature, you instantiate the object, and you call it either via pointer or a reference. The reference is the easier way to just write it out. So um, <coughs> in this case, it's uh, the advantage of functors, you, they can carry state. So you can, when you create them, you can set some state in there that you're using. So that's one of the main reasons to use functors instead of functions. And when you get the templates, they might be actually make the syntax a little bit easier to work with also. Okay, any questions so far? No? Lambdas. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about them. Uh, a lambda is more or less a way, it's defined as uh, the compiler will transcribe it into some kind of templated uh, functor, more or less. So if you know how a functor works, then you know how a lambda works. You just know, need to know the rules for how to translate it. So if you have this struct, assume this one was templated. I'd made it a concrete for just making it easy to read. You have some member on it. This lambda is more or less the same. We take a capture of n. That means it's going to make sort of a member, and then you can use that one. So that's an easy way to think about lambdas. This is sort of a hand wavy thing, but uh, if you have any major objection, I'd like to hear them. <laughs> I think it's a good mental model for it. 
Okay, that's more or less what I think. Yeah, stud function. That used to be the major support you had from the standard library to handle these sort of uh, function pointers in a more general way. You create a stud function where you set the signature, um, taking an int, returning a void. And you can take the address of it, since it's a free function. Or This could be a typo, actually. You should probably have an ampersand there, I realize now. Uh, or maybe not. Ah, whatever. Once you store it, you can actually call it as a stud function. One thing, it doesn't support member function as far as I know. I usually end up writing a little lambda that takes the object and do the member call in that lambda. So std function is only doing functors and free functions as far as I know. And I've been sort of missing that. I like the idea of uh, just having my code, I have some user code, I have a driver, I want to pass it down as member function that this driver is going to call when something happens. So it felt clunky just to do the lambda thing. That's one motivation why I started this delegate thing. Yeah, this is more or less what I said, I think. Um, general purpose storage of callables. They can be of arbitrary size, hence then you need uh, heap allocation. Hence you can get out of memory and it can throw and all that, which is not always okay. For embedded system, I like to have something I can guarantee is not going to throw and yeah. And is also <laughs> smaller memory. <coughs> They, some implementations use type erasure, in, so they have sort of an inheritance inside them. Um, don't know the timing of that one, but I suspect it can be slow. Okay, common scenario embedded. Let's walk by down the memory lane 20 years ago or 10 years ago in embedded. You write this stuff in C, you have a driver, you have some user code, you want to store some pointer that's going to be called when you have interrupts. Uh, in C, you have to do a void star since the driver <coughs> doesn't know the types. And yeah, it's get, it gets ugly. If you spend 10 years writing C, that's just normal. So it's how it's often done. So an example, <coughs> this is part of the code, you have the driver. I, I do a type def now since it's C. The driver has this register callback uh, and you supply a context that is sort of the pointer to the object that you're calling on. It's a very common pattern in C that you have this first argument with a context that you then cast to your own type. You have the user data for some higher level thing. It has some functions that takes this, registers, cast it to void, then the callback then happens. You get this drive callback and you do this casting all the time. In every one of these callbacks, you do that casting. I got sort of tired of this pattern. So let's take a half step forward to C. Uh, old school. How could we do this a little bit better? Do we using here? So it's, yeah, imagine a type there for C native 98. Uh, you store it as the driver callback. You store it as the void pointer. And the uh, reg register does that thing. Then usually in your user class, you end up having this static function that's more or less a free function that doesn't do anything else but set the class, user class, and then call the actual function that you want to get called. Very common pattern that I've seen. So you do sort of a middle step to get from your void casted pointer to your user class pointer, and then you can start working with normal member functions, C++, as we used to. But couldn't this part and those two be sort of encapsulated in sort of a class, sort of a delegate? By the way, this is nothing new from me. Uh, I know include OS has very similar concepts. Um, it's, it's not original in no way, but I figured it's, it was a nice exercise to do, so I just went with it. 
So what do we want? That's the basic idea at least. You encapsulate those two pointers. Uh, you make nice templates around it. And whenever you call it, you sort of have this intermediate function generated and then do the actual call. So that's the basic idea. <coughs> and I want to have this as an alternative to std function. So it should be fairly similar, but uh, with the constraints that I had before. One little quirky thing is that uh, when you take the function address, you supply it as a template argument instead of as a, func uh, as a parameter in the runtime list. The reason is that I need to, yeah, it works better, <laughs> simply put. So you need to do this at uh, some point where you really know the function uh, name, or where you can do sort of compile time resolution of it. But then, if that is a problem, you can just take it down to a delegate and then pass the delegate around. So it shouldn't be much of an issue. And it should give the compiler a little bit better optimization possibilities. OK, first line uh, outline. <coughs> this one we recognize. But this time, it's an adapter function. It's not the final function. And that one is defined up here as in this case, I'm doing it easy. It's just an integer argument in, it's a return void. So, but that is fairly easy to generalize later on, just to show the ID. So you have these, and when you want to set it, you call the set function, you supply a member function as a template argument, and this constructs up a do member, which is this trampoline function and you set, you cause it to void and store it. And then next time you're gonna call it, you just call that one, supplies the context, and you end up in here. This is a static one, so uh, here you do the static cast and do the call. So by do, doing this, you sort of take a middle step that you would be taking anyway <coughs> if you do, did the C++ thing. And once you got this thing going, it's fairly easy to gen generalize. Um, <coughs> how do you use this one? Let's start there. Same example, you have the driver. You create this delegate. Uh, in the constructor here, you do a set and uh, various reasons. You need to give it two times. First, I can use a class, then use a strike callback. This is lifted in C17, but for early things it's this is how you have to do it so I set that one and I also store the point at this object and once the interrupt actually want to do a call here it just calls del value and you end up down here so it should be fairly easy to use any questions so far no nope, I don't think so I'll go on Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, you can generalize the parameters pack, return value. Inlining, since the, much of this is compile time, you actually do, when you do the set, you generate the member functions uh, trampoline at the same time. So the compiler can actually see a lot of the stuff that you're doing, which means that you can do a lot of optimization on it. And then for the different variants and different types of argument list, and you can just start adding on set and make functions, and it's there's a quite a number of them after a while. Uh, we get the functor more or less the same. In this case, set functor, we call it set. Then you do this adapt functor. This looks a little bit different this time, but still the main point, you still have the same data here. So, so if you needed a do sort of inheritance in the std function example, we're using void costs here to do the type erasure between setting the function action, doing it, calling it. But we do it in a controlled way since it's encapsulated within our own class. So when you set the function, you also create the other one that's going to unpack it. So I would consider it fairly type safe. It's very constrained, the void casting. 
Okay. <clears throat> I started writing on this and I started building out and somewhere I needed to sort of what I'm going to do, what's, what's the main goal of this thing. So I wanted to have something that felt like an ordinary function pointer where you actually store a um, member also or an object um, that you could copy it around, you can check it for null and you can call it. So that, that's sort of the idea. There is one uh, trade-off. Since I don't want to do heap allocation, I can only take it by reference or by pointer, the object. So the user still need to make sure the object is alive. Stood function, it swallows the object, so it guarantees it. But in this case, since it's by reference, you need to take care of that object. That's the downside, I would say. So, um, yeah, let's see what did I want to say here. Uh, in this case, yeah, when I started to, this is an example of using this delegate where you have uh, actual uh, signatures that you can set. Assume you have some sort of packet, you have a driver that can deliver this packet as a callback. You have some protocol that want to receive these packets and you want to receive them in your... Rx <coughs> packet function. Yes, you want to receive them down here. So you get Either I'm supporting for this uh, delegate, I'm supporting two different ways to set the function. Either you have a ready constructed um, delegate, you can call dot set and then the member function, or you can call a static make. So you can actually do that variant instead. You could imagine a freestanding make delegate sort of like make unique, but that's got other issues. I'm going to come back to that one. Seems reasonable. Yeah, I guess so. I assume I take that as a yes. Uh, const correctness. When you start diving into this kind of stuff, you start discovering things. See, what I'm, especially for member functions, you take a function and you take an object, you pack them together into something that can later be called. But what happens if when you take the function but you don't know what object to call it on, can you sort of split it up into two different things? And it turns out no. Because if you take the member function, it can be const or non-const, depending on, yeah. And that's extra type information that you sort of need to store until you get the object so you know if you can do the call on this object or not. Because if you're having a non-const member function and you later supply a const object, it's, you want to have a compile error on that one. So for the delegate itself, you need to actually supply them at the same time. Uh, to get around this, I actually create an extra mem function that just takes the member function, but it also contains the constness of the member function. And then you can use that one together with the object to get the delegate later on. So that's one way to get around it. Um, was that what I want to say on this slide? I think so. Yes, you have these must not compile because I'm having a const object here and I'm setting it to a member. So I really want that one to be a compiler. And since we're storing references to objects, I see no reason to take a temporary. So these are deleted. So our value references in as objects, and I just wrote delete on those. So you get, that should remove some mistakes at least. I think it's going to more or less say what I just spoke about. Um, <coughs> yeah, the constness. And I didn't care about volatile. <laughs> I don't know what a volatile function is. So. And the mem function just for sort of, if, say for instance, I could imagine you want to have this uh, number of member function, you store it in a std map, for instance. And depending on some situation, you select one on the key and then call it on some, some object. I 
can see scenarios where you want to have references to these member functions, but you later on want to set the object. So then use member function. You have the same thing with functors that cons must match. But since you don't have two things, the functor is actually the thing you're calling. You only have one thing, so it's no issue of sort of a gap there. That's a good thing. OK, <coughs> then I did some, yeah, this one. Uh, you want to have it feel like a function, so you compare it to null pointer and all that. You overload on null one, so you can compare it to null pointers. I did one thing that's sort of out of the ordinary. You are allowed to call a default constructed delegate. What it will do is do nothing and return a default constructed return value object. The reason for this is you can get rid of a lot of null pointed checks. If you have a driver and uh, of all the different places you call this delegate, there is some places where you're not sure if the user has set a delegate or not. You don't want to take the burden of a null pointed check just for that. Yes? What if the return value isn't uh, default constructible? Then you should get a compile error. So. From just yeah, because general. what I'm doing here is uh, the trampoline function or the sort of intermediate thing. That one, there is a default null pointer function that you set at, const at construction time in the delegate. And that one returns a uh, default constructor object. So you should get a compiler. So you have to initialize your delegate if you have a non-default constructor model return value. Um, that might not even work, I think. Um, yeah, that could be, I haven't checked it. My guess is you couldn't use an object as a return value that can't be default constructed. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I haven't tested it. You can check it out. <laughs> the code is on GitHub. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, this is, I've extracted part of my test suite just to be able to show part of it. Uh, you have a derived class, you do a delegate, you do a base class, and uh, you set the base, and it seems to work. It calls the der derived class. So that's good, as expected. Um, do I have more? Summary. That's more or less what I had. Um, this is the address. A fair amount of check-ins last couple of three weeks. Um, feel free to use it. I think I wrote MIT license, license. I've been doing iterations of this ID in experiments, but I try to write this one in a way that's fairly easy to use. And I'm fairly happy with the interface with set and make functions. <coughs> so I don't think it's going to change the, I'm not going to change the interface there. I might change the implementation behind it. There is a fair amount of template uh, pattern matching, let's call it that, just to find out if you're using member functions and all, all that jazz. Feel free to go in and look at it and have comments. Okay, any questions? Have you measured performance compared to uh, C's, the classic C solution? Um, not in a consistent, stringent way. What I have done, uh, that was a year ago, and I not really this solution, but it was the, not this code, but the same solution. Uh, for Cortex-M4, I used G GCC and C++. Um, I used interrupt vectors in, uh, I set up a table of delegates, more or less, where I hard coded that the Cortex, they have these um, handlers that you sort of magic named functions that get called. I let them just do a call on one of these delegates. So I had a number of these delegates in a table and set up all the interrupt vectors. Then I had a user function setting a delegate and then called back to a, um, a callback function, member function. And then I look at the disassembly. It turned out the actual call just was three instructions after optimization. Uh, I did a uh, force in line on the actual uh, operator call just to be able to get it to that point. But you had three instructions doing a call. And then when you jumped to the sort of trampoline function, 
there was a one instruction just to get on to the next part. And that is because the member function, the this pointer is usually implemented as a hidden first argument. And my signature function takes that pointer as a hidden first argument. <coughs> so behind the scenes, it more or less matches what it's supposed to do on the machine level. So that's the performance measurement I've done. Um, it seems to be efficient in generating flash code for microcontrollers. Uh, and uh, then I guess it's fast. Uh, have you looked at uh, Don Klukston's uh, fast delegates code? I think I passed. Is that something wrote? He, they wrote in 2005 some. It's pretty old, yeah. Yeah. I think I've seen it. Uh -huh. um, it's very similar to this, I'm, I'm assuming. This was, I wanted, I've seen these sort of solutions in different places. I think I've seen that one. And uh, you also have this include OS, have their delegates. Um, more or less the same idea. I wanted to condense it down to something that works for me and it was a nice exercise. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I learned a lot of template programming on this one. So, yeah, it's, it's, there are stuff out there. It feels like these type of solutions sort of get forgotten in the old style C++ and there's a lot of talk about the functures and other stuff. So this is getting sort of the embedded focus back. Okay. Tack mycket. Ja.